Chapter 7 takes a totally different direction. Chapter 7 talks about integration. And that's a crucial chapter. That's what you take with you out of calculus more than anything. Derivative you already took in 5a. We reviewed that in chapter 6. But now you are really going to be reviewing how to integrate. You're going to be reviewing the u sub that you know, but we're going to add to that. First things first, we want to undo a product rule. We want to undo f times g prime is f prime times g plus f times g prime. And if I move this to the left, that would be f times g prime minus f prime times g equal f times g prime. And if I integrate, the integral will undo the derivative right there the integral of f times g equals the integral of f times g prime the crucial part here for you to see is that initially I can't integrate this what that does this trick allows you to switch the derivative in case we're not really being able to integrate that. And this is how it works. The book uses this notation. The integral of u dot dv times dv is u times v minus the integral of v times du. That's really integration by parts. Something I want to do so you could show you so you could save your time. This is a note save you a lot of time if i'm taking a derivative of e to the kx that is e to the kx times k if i am integrating e to the kx that is e to the kx and remember an integral undo a derivative to undo multiplication you divide plus c this will save you some time instead of you really sitting there and trying to take to take uh, to use u sub every time you see this so if i'm taking a derivative of the sine of 5x that is the sine of 5x times 5. if i'm integrating okay you guys forgive me right i mean that's the cosine if i'm integrating the cosine of 5x dx oh i'm getting clumsy there that would be the sine of 5x going back instead of multiplying by 5 you divide by 5. so i'm glancing at this and this is how this works how do you choose u and how do you choose v that's what this this section is about on page 516 i'm looking at number four if I want to integrate that, basically I'm asking, what did you take a derivative of to get y e to the 0.2y? Well, that's not evident. u sub doesn't do it. That is, if I let u equal 0.2y, du will be 0.2 dy. Well, there's an extra y floating around. I could use a u sub, but I'll show you that later. For now, the u sub that you're used to doesn't work that way so what i'll do i'll choose u and v you always choose u whatever you can get rid of by taking enough derivatives we know a derivative of e to the x is e to the x so you're gonna choose those two the difference between u the u sub and ingression by parts between u and dv you must choose the entire integrand all of it so if I let u equal y, why am I letting u equal y? Because if I take a derivative of y, it'll disappear. So I let u normally equal whatever I can get rid of by taking enough derivatives, such as polynomials. And that means that dv would be whatever is left over. What's left over? Well, if this is u, what's left over is e to the 0.2y dy. Now, I notice what I need. I need u. It's right there. But I need v. If this is dv, the way to get v is for you to integrate. The integral of this based on what I just showed you, that's e to the 0.2y divided by 0.2. And I also need a du right there. The derivative of this is simply dy. 
And now, this is going to equal u times v minus the integral of v du. You have to kind of write this enough times until it registers. u is right there. v is right there. So it's really this. Minus the integral of this. And that will be e to the 0.2y over 0.2 dy. What that did, that allowed us to get rid of y, which was a problem. Now, of course, I could simplify 0.1 over 0.2. That's 2 over 10, 1 fifth, and so on and so forth. But let me just focus on the calculus for now. This is the integral of e to the 0.2y dy. So if you notice, initially I couldn't integrate, and now there's no more y. So this is y e to the 0.2y divided by 0.2 minus 1 over 0.2. And this integral is actually e to the 0.2y divided by 0.2 plus c. So my answer is y e to the 0.2y. And I don't mind you leaving the answer like that for the exam, but for the homework, they're going to really clean that up. And guess what? At any given time, you could take a derivative of this, and it should give you that. And taking the derivative is a lot easier. So if I look at number 6, again, I see a polynomial times a trig. I know trig you can't get rid of by taking enough derivatives. And I don't know what you took a derivative of to get this. So if I let u equal whatever I can get rid of by taking enough derivatives, x minus 1, that means dv must be whatever is left over. dv must be the sine of pi x dx. And I already know what I need. I need du, the derivative of this, that's simply dx. And I need v, which is the integral of that. What do you take a derivative of to get sine negative the cosine of pi x? And what do you do with that pi? If I was taking a derivative, I would multiply by it. Since I'm integrating, I divide by it. This will save you some time. And this is going to be u times v minus the integral of v du. Again, it's right there. You really need to get that out of the way. Well, u times v is right there. That's going to be x minus 1 times negative the cosine of pi x all over pi minus the integral of this, v du. Negative times a negative will make that a positive. 1 over pi I drag out the cosine of pi x dx. This is going to be negative 1 over pi x minus 1 cosine of pi x plus 1 over pi. And what do you take a derivative of to get cosine? The sine of pi x. And what do you do with that pi? you divide by it again. And that would be my answer. Now I could, I'm going to do one of those. I could take a derivative of what I have and show that I'll get this. If I take a derivative of this, negative 1 over pi is a constant product rule. Derivative of the first times the second plus the first times derivative of the second. That's negative the sine of pi x times pi. And this is a constant. Derivative of sine is the cosine of pi x times pi. Well, I notice this is negative 1 over pi. You uh, hate it like this, that. That is negative 1 over pi, the cosine of pi x negative times a negative is a positive 1 over pi x minus 1 sine of pi x times pi and this cancels one of those plus 1 over pi cosine of pi x and i notice this and that cancel each other out this pi and that pi cancel out and guess what i'm left with what i started with if I look at number 8, what do you notice? I notice there's a t squared. 
So if I let u equal t squared, I am aware that, you know what, I'm not going to be able to get rid of that because when I take a derivative of that, that's 2t dt. Well, not a problem. I'm going to let dv be the rest, which is the sine of beta t. And I'm going to integrate to get v. That is negative the cosine of beta t divided by beta. And this is going to be u times v minus the integral of v du u times v is right there, negative t squared over v, cosine of beta t, minus the integral of v du, which is this. And I'm going to take the 2 over beta out. I'm left with t, that cosine of beta t dt. It's true that this integral right here is still not done, but I started with t squared, now I have t. I'm on the right track, which means I have to do integration by parts again, but only on this piece, if I let u equal t again, and dv equal the cosine of beta t dt, and if I take a derivative, that's dt, and if I integrate, v will be the sine of beta t divided by beta. And this part, I just copy down. Minus 2 over beta. And now comes this integral. This integral is going to yield. This integral is going to yield u times v. u times v. Minus the integral of u dv. Of v du. That would be, I'm going to take the 1 over beta out. The sine of beta t dt. And I notice that now I can integrate. This is negative t squared over beta, cosine of beta t. And this is negative twice t, the sine of beta t over beta squared. This piece right here is going to give me, uh, let me think, sine that's going to give me negative cosine of beta t, right, over beta. Don't forget you're multiplying that by negative 1 over beta. And when you distribute this n times a negative 2 over beta, and that would be a negative t squared over beta, the cosine of beta t, minus 2t, the sine of beta t, divided by beta squared, three negatives will yield a negative, two over beta cubed, the cosine of beta t, plus c, of course. Now, every time you integrate, you get a plus c, but those c's absorb each other and become all one constant. Now, I have an example. I want to show you a shortcut somebody came up with. Do you see that I have to use integration by parts four times to get this? Somebody figured out that, you know what, what you're doing every time, you're really taking the product of those and you're integrating this. You're really taking the product of those and you're integrating this. So you're taking the product of those, integrating this, the product of those, integrating this. And somebody said, you know what, why not just use it that way? Let u equal, what are you going to let u equal? x to the fourth. Take a derivative. Take another derivative. Take another derivative. Keep on taking derivatives until you get zero. dv is going to be e to the x. If you integrate, well, that's e to the x. And they figured out that, you know what? You're really going to multiply those two, those two, those two, those two, and those two. And they figured you start with a positive and you alternate on the signs. You could use that shortcut if you're going to use integration by parts more than once. And they said this is going to equal the product of those x to the fourth e to the x minus 4x cubed e to the x plus 12x squared e to the x minus 24x e to the x plus 24 e to the x plus c. So, 
Let me elaborate on that really quick. We just did a problem. Let me copy this problem down and do it again. And let me do it using that shortcut and show you that we get the same answer. I could come in and say, well, let's apply that to this. A nice shortcut. A very bright person came up with this, obviously. If I let here u equal t squared, take a derivative, take another derivative, so you take derivatives until you get zero, and let dv be the sine of beta t. If you integrate that, that's going to be negative the cosine of beta t divided by beta. If you integrate that, that's going to be negative the sine of beta t divided by beta squared. And if you integrate that, that's going to be positive that cosine of beta t divided by beta cubed. You're going to multiply across that way. Start with a plus and alternate on the signs. So this is going to equal negative t squared, I'm sorry, yeah, negative t squared that cosine of beta t divided by beta. This part, negative times a negative will give a positive 2t the sine of beta t divided by beta squared and the last positive times a positive is going to be positive twice the cosine of beta t divided by beta cubed plus c and let's see how that work look at this and look at this oh it seems i'm off by the signs for some reason you take a derivative of cosine you get negative one why let me check what went wrong Okay, I caught it. Uh, when I did u times v, that should be minus, and that's a negative, that makes that a positive. So this should be a positive. That'll change both of these signs. My mistake. And there it is. Okay, a few more examples to go. I have three to go. Well, here are the same deal. This is what I can get rid of by taking my derivatives, and I know I have to take the derivative twice, so why not use the shortcut? u equal x squared plus 1. The derivative of that is 2x, the derivative of that is 2 and a 0. And let dv be e to the negative x. Integrate e to the negative x. When you divide by a negative 1, that's like multiplying by a negative 1. Integrate again, that becomes a positive, and integrate again multiply those multiply those multiply those and start with a positive a negative and a positive so that's going to be the product of those that is negative e to the negative x oops it's easier to put the x squared plus one first and here you're going to get a negative 2x e to the negative x and here you're going to get minus 2e to the negative x. And here I'm evaluating that from 0 to 1. So it's best to take e to the negative x out of this, or just leave it in. It doesn't matter, right? So if you put a 1, that's going to be negative 2e to the negative 1 minus 2e to the negative 1 minus 2e to the negative 1. Be careful with the 0 because e to the 0 is not 0, it's 1. If you put 0 in, that's going to be a negative 1 e to the 0 minus, if you put a 0 there, that's going to be 0 minus 2 e to the 0. So that's going to be negative 6 e to the negative 1. And this is a negative 1 minus 2. That's negative 3 times a negative is plus 3. Now we get to this part. And in any integration that you're going to do all throughout this course, you would always, always, always let u equal a natural log of w, or two sections from now, inverse trick functions. You would never let dv equal, we know how to take a derivative of a natural log. We don't know what you take a derivative of to get the natural log yet. So anytime you see a natural log or an inverse trick function, that's considered a straightforward problem because there's only one way of doing it. You must let u equal natural log of w and try u first if you can. And I noticed that doesn't work. Well, if that doesn't work, then integration by parts. dv is w squared, and if you integrate dw, and if you integrate, 
v will be w cubed over 3. This is going to be u times v minus the integral of v du. If I multiply those, I'll get a third. w cubed over w is w squared dw, and that would be w cubed over 3 natural log of w minus 1 third. Add 1 to the power, divide by that, evaluate it from 1 to 2. So that is 2 cubed is 8 over 3 natural log of 2 minus 1 ninth. 2 cubed is 8 minus, if you put a 1 in, you get 1 third natural log of 1 minus 1 ninth times 1. Of course, natural log of 1 is 0. So this is 8 thirds natural log of 2 minus 8 ninths. And if you distribute the negative n, you'll get a 1 ninth. So that is 8 thirds natural log of 2 minus 7 ninths. Two more examples to go. One of them I'm making up. And this is a very important application. You wouldn't see the application until you take math 55. That's all over the place. Well, the issue here is that e to the x cosine of x, I can't get rid of either of those by letting you, if I let you equal the exponential, guess what? Take as many derivatives as you want of the exponential, it's going to stay there. And if you let you equal the cosine, derivative will be the sine, then cosine, then sine, then cosine. So I can't eliminate that, either of those. In this case, you're going to do integration by parts twice, and you will get this back. So you have to be patient and work slowly. First attempt, I'm going to work this in a straight path so you can see it. Normally, I want you to always work downwards like I've been doing. In this case, I'm going to work to the side so just you would see it. First attempt, I'm going to, and here you could let you equal whatever you want, either e to the x or cosine of x. It's your preference how you'd like to take a derivative or antiderivative. I'm going to choose cosine of x. du is negative the sine of x dx. dv is e to the x dx. And if I integrate, v will be e to the x still. This is going to yield u times v, which is e to the x cosine of x minus the integral of v dv. Negative times a negative, we're going to be careful here, e to the x sine of x dx. We knew that wasn't going to do anything, meaning we're not going to eliminate the integral. Now I'm going to work this out. So this is e to the x cosine of x plus, and let's see what comes out of that integral. If I let u equal, be consistent, the trick function, sine of x, du is the cosine of x. Let dv equal e to the x dx, whatever is left over. And if you integrate, v equal e to the x. And that's going to give e to the x sine of x minus the integral of v du. And that is e to the x cosine of x. Now, ignore the middle part. Look at the far left and look at the far right. Do you see that on the far right? those two are identical so basically what I got out of this I got that the integral of e to the x cosine of x dx is e to the x cosine of x plus e to the x sine of x minus the integral of e to the x cosine of x I'm getting really clumsy here dx. Right? I'm leaving a lot of things out because that's dx. Now, if I move this to the left, simple algebra, one of those plus one of those, wouldn't that be two of those? That would be simply this. Plus c. And if I divide by two, I get the answer. How do you like that trick? And whether you say C over 2 or C, we're saying the same thing. And let's see if that works. 
I know you have your doubts. Let's put those doubts to rest. If I take a derivative of my answer, I should get what I started with. If you're saying this is the answer, you're saying this is what you took a derivative of to get this, let's take a derivative and see what happens. Derivative of this will be 1 half the product root e to the x times cosine of x plus e to the x times negative sine of x. Derivative of this plus 1 half product root. Derivative of e to the x is e to the x sine of x plus e to the x derivative of sine is the cosine of x. Derivative of the constant is 0. This is 1 half e to the x cosine of x minus 1 half e to the x sine of x plus 1 half e to the x sine of x plus 1 half e to the x cosine of x. Those cancel out and those are the same. 1 half plus 1 half is 1 e to the x cosine of x. What do you know? Magic, right? Actually, that's math. The shortcut works on that. I'll talk about that in our discussion tomorrow. I have one more problem I want to do. And I will look at problem number... I want to look at problem number 18. The same deal. I'm going to let u equal cosine of 2x du is negative twice the sine of 2x dx I'm going to let dv equal e to the negative theta and if I integrate v will equal negative e to the negative theta this is going to be u times v minus the integral of u dv well since both of those are negative times a negative that stays a negative at 2 up front and I'm going to get e to the negative theta sine of 2 theta. Oh, I'm so stuck on theta. Yeah, it is theta. That's right. d theta. And I knew I was going to do this again. That's negative e to the negative theta cosine of 2 theta minus twice. And now let's see what this integral is going to yield. I'm going to let u equal sine of 2 theta. du is cosine of 2 theta times 2 and dv will be the rest e to the negative theta d theta integrate v will be negative e to the negative theta so this is this integral is going to give u times v minus the integral of v du here since this is negative times a negative that's a positive I'm going to take the 2 up front e to the negative theta cosine of 2 theta d theta and if I look at the far left, I'm looking at the integral of e to the negative theta cosine of 2 theta d theta equal. I'm going to skip the middle part and copy the end. That's negative e to the negative theta cosine of 2 theta distribute plus twice e to the negative theta sine of 2 theta distribute minus 4 the integral of e to the negative theta cosine of 2 theta d theta. And now I notice this is the same. Negative 4, if I move that to the right, becomes positive. So this is 5 the integral of e to the negative theta cosine of 2 theta d theta equals negative e to the negative theta cosine of 2 theta plus twice e to the negative theta sine of 2 theta plus c. And if I want this integral by itself, That would be negative one-fifth divided by five both sides, simple algebra. Divide by five both sides. And c over five is actually c, and that would be my answer. Now here I'm giving you the option one through forty-one. You could do every other odd. If you feel you got a good hand on this, you're good shape. If you're not, tackle the odds. You really need to get this down because this is one of five techniques that we need you already know one you know about the u sub i'm going to modify that later we have integration by parts that's the second type of integration that we need to know